Accountability is something that many in the world are trying to make others have because of the wrongs that they have caused in both the present and the past. The problem though is that if certain people think they're above the law and above reproach, then they'll continue to try and do things because they feel they won't get caught. One such person is James Franco, who has been accused by many women over the years of various acts of assault and depravity, and while he's trying to play it off, they're not holding back. Allow us to break it down for you, but before we do that, go ahead and do us a favor, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Do you want to win an iPhone 12, maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winner will be announced at the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. Oh, number six, Busy Phillips. Believe it or not, there are quite a few people who are trying to showcase the dark side of James Franco, and not all of them are going and accusing him of the same thing. For example, Franco has caught heat from his former Freaks and Geeks co-star, Busy Phillips. In her 2018 memoir, This Will Only Hurt a Little, she claimed that Franco, who she describes as a effing bully, once assaulted her on the set. As part of the script, she was instructed to lightly hit Franco in the chest. Afterwards, she alleged that he blew up and attacked her. He grabbed both my arms and screamed in my face, don't ever touch me again, Phillips wrote, and he threw me to the ground, flat on my back, wind knocked out of me. Speaking further to The Hollywood Reporter in 2018 about the incident, she alleged, James and I have talked about it over the years. At one point, he apologized to me. Men are allowed to be crazy geniuses, and women better show the f up and say your lines and hit your marks and be skinny and be better and be faster and be funnier and be on time and hang your wardrobe when you're done and goodbye. I was always acutely aware of my expendability, and so I felt I needed to never complain, always show up on time and not be difficult. If someone else was being difficult, it was my job to be the easy one or figure out a way to soothe the situation. She also recalls that Freaks and Geeks was very early in James Franco's career, and yet he showed these tendencies. So if he's willing to do that very early on, can you imagine what he did later on? Fast forward to the more recent events concerning Franco and she noted, I wouldn't want to work with someone who has multiple allegations of predatory behavior. So in fact, I won't. We can't blame her. And I like James and we are good now. I mean, and we have been for years and part of ugh, my heartbreak when the book was coming out was that all of the things that I was sharing. Number five, Sarah Tither Kaplan. Fast forward to 2018 and it was a big year for him critically as James Franco won the Golden Globe for Best Actor via his role in The Disaster Artist, which for him was no doubt a big night. But for those who had been abused by him, not so much. It was like a slap in my face, said Sarah to their Kaplan, a former acting student at the film school Franco founded who went on to appear in several of his productions. Tither Kaplan is one of five women who, in interviews with The Times, accused Franco, age 39, of behavior they found to be inappropriate or sexually exploitive. I don't even know what I'm allowed to say. That's the scary thing is like I'm terrified for my career. Sarah was a student in Franco's acting class. She says she agreed to appear nude in Franco's law. Four were his students and another said he was her mentor. In some cases, they said they believed Franco could offer them career advancement and accused to his wishes even when they were uncomfortable. I feel there was an abuse of power and there was a culture of exploiting non-celebrity women and a culture of women being replaceable, said to their Kaplan, who was one of many women who took to Twitter to vent anger over Franco's win and his support of Time's Up, the initiative combating sexual misconduct in Hollywood, of which he's now being accused of many times over. These women went on to discuss the various things he told them to do in his acting classes, not the least of which was them disrobing and having to do certain kinds of scenes, and that he got mad at them when some of the women didn't want to get naked to act with him. In sex scenes that felt that they weren't, that I felt were not artistically justified and were added in after the fact. The things that I heard that were on Twitter um, are not accurate. Number four, Franco's response. However, not only did nothing happen to Franco in a meaningful way, he would later try and dissuade the accusations during a talk with Stephen Colbert. Look, in my life, I pride myself on taking responsibility for things that I have done, he told Colbert. I have to do that to maintain my well-being. The things that I heard that were on Twitter are not accurate, but I completely support people coming out and being able to have a voice because they didn't have a voice for so long. So I don't want to shut them down in any way. If I've done something wrong, he added, I will fix it. I have to. A curious response. Well, first I want to say I, I, I work because I do support it. I, I was, you know, 
look, I was so excited to, to win, but being in that room that night was incredible. I mean, it was, it was not the least of which was that he was denying the accounts and yet praising them for coming forward and saying that others needed to voice their complaints with abusers in the Hollywood scene. So in one paragraph, he said he didn't do anything wrong and made himself look more acceptable by praising their speaking out. This is exactly what a lot of people do when they're put into a corner of their own making. Though to be clear, the accusations aren't done yet. Number three, Hillary Dusum. If you want another account of his teachings gone wrong, you can ask Hillary Dusum who was a student of Franco's back in 2012 while he taught at a different acting school. At first, she felt that he was a generous spirit and was generally trying to help them there. Her feelings shifted after being selected to appear with a handful of other female students in what she thought was one of Franco's art films. Natalie Chmiel, the other student, said she was told the footage would be used in a Seven for All Mankind jeans commercial. Both women described what they consider to be an unprofessional and hostile shoot at a strip club. A 50-50 in 2020, which just means, you know, people that are underrepresented, women and um, people of color, people in the LGBT community get, you know, positions, leadership positions. Midway through filming, Dusum said Franco approached the actresses who wore masks and lingerie and asked, so who wants to take your shirt off? When no actress volunteered, Franco stormed off, Dusum recalled. I felt like I was selected for something based on my hard work and my merit. And when I realized it was because I have nice breasts, it was pretty clear that was not the case. Dusum said, I don't think he started teaching with bad intentions, but he went down a bad path and damaged a lot of people in the process. These are just some of the stories to come from his acting schools, and each one tells you how Franco refused to do what he promised in regards to helping them get roles, especially if they didn't adhere to his desires. And we're still not done. Number two, Charlene Yee. That, that they fill all positions that they've been deprived of. I completely believe in that. Um, that's why I wore it. Actress and comedian Charlene Yee accused James Franco's peers, including Seth Rogen, of enabling his alleged abusive behavior. Furthermore, Charlene Yee revealed that the disaster artist production team bribed her when she tried to leave over sexual misconduct allegations against actor James Franco. In an Instagram post, Yee said the production tried to prevent her from leaving by offering her a substantial acting role. She expressed her desire to quit the 2017 movie, stating she did not feel safe working with Franco, which is very understandable given what she knew from others like her and what she had seen on set. Yi wrote, Why aren't any of James Franco's white male feminist peers holding him accountable for abusing women, then using his power and platform to gaslight them? And, uh, I haven't read them. I've heard about them. Um, okay, first of all, I, don't, I have no idea what I did to Ali Sheedy. I directed her in a, a play off Broadway. When I tried to break legal contract and quit Disaster Artist because James Franco is a sexual predator, they tried to bribe me with a bigger acting role. I cried and told them that was the exact opposite of what I wanted, that I didn't feel safe working with a effing sexual predator. She continued, they minimized and said Franco being a predator was so last year and that he changed when I literally heard of him abusing new women that week. She wasn't done. White men saying it's not their responsibility when holding Franco accountable or when holding Seth Rogen accountable, then whose responsibility is it? Number one, settlements. The fallout from these accusations is slowly trickling out. I had nothing but a great time with her, uh, 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 total respect for her. I, had no, I have no idea why she was upset she took the tweet down, I don't, I don't know. Some of the women we talked about earlier in the video filed a lawsuit against Franco that was settled in February, but what exactly was the settlement is unknown. More recently, James Franco and associated entities have agreed to pay $2,235,000 to resolve a lawsuit alleging he pushed acting students into performing an increasingly explicit sex scenes on camera. The details of the settlement were revealed in court filings made public on Wednesday. The proposed deal is being put to a Los Angeles judge for approval. I have to do that to maintain my uh, well-being. Uh, I do it whenever I know that, that there's something wrong or needs to be changed. I make it a point to do it. As part of the settlement, the parties have also agreed to a statement that reads in part, while defendants continue to deny the allegations in the complaint, they acknowledge that plaintiffs have raised important issues, and all parties strongly believe that now is a critical time to focus on addressing the mistreatment of women in Hollywood. All agree on the need to make sure that no one in the entertainment industry, regardless of race, religion, disability, ethnicity, background, gender, or sexual orientation, faces discrimination, harassment, or prejudice of any kind. 
And there you have it everyone, a look at the situation with James Franco and the various women that are accusing him of various acts. Are you shocked that so many accusations have been lobbied against him? Do you feel that something needs to be done beyond a settlement? Should he be blacklisted from Hollywood as a whole? Go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.